I, 41 male, have been married to my wife, 39 female, for 11 years. A few days ago, I discovered some suspicious messages on her phone. When I confronted her, she admitted to having an emotional affair with a mutual friend. I was devastated but was open to reconciliation somewhat because I thought it was only silly messages. We agreed to work on our marriage, go to therapy, and try to heal together. But yesterday, my world collapsed all over again. I found texts on her phone which implied the affair had been physical from the beginning. I completely lost it. All the emotions I'd been bottling up came rushing out. I screamed at her about how betrayed I felt, how she had lied to me, manipulated me, and gaslighted me for days. I told her I wanted a divorce and that I never wanted to see her again. She kept apologizing, saying she regretted ruining our marriage and that her past trauma was what led to imploding her own life. Today, I'm left struggling with a mix of anxiety and deep depression. I know deep down that I can't be with her anymore, but I still feel bad about divorcing her. Everybody in her life's always abandoned her. Her parents, her foster parents, her foster siblings, her exes, etc. She keeps saying she doesn't know what she'd do if I abandon her too and keeps breaking down every time I'm around. I doubt it's out of actual regret and more out of self-preservation anyway. My life makes no sense to me now. I was ready to put in the work to save our marriage, but now I'm faced with the reality that it's truly over. It feels like the past years of building our shared life were all for nothing. I don't know how to move forward or how to deal with the weight of this betrayal. Update 1 I have decided that a divorce is the only way forward for me. My wife hasn't shown any real remorse or made any genuine effort to repair the damage she's done, nor do I think it's repairable either. Her words have been empty, and I need to focus on my own mental health. I told her that she needs to move out of our home so I can start the healing process without the constant tension and anxiety of having her around. I also got some advice from people I trust who warned me that she might try to pull something drastic, like making false accusations to get me out of the picture. Yeah, I'm talking false domestic violence charges. Because of that, I decided to take some steps to protect myself and started looking for an apartment for her. After some searching, I finally found a place that I can move her into this weekend. When I told her that I'd found a new apartment and she'd be signing the lease, she began to panic. She suddenly claimed she was having severe anxiety and wanted to talk to me before we made any decisions. She said she hoped we could still fix things and mentioned that she was considering going no contact with her affair partner. Until that point, I had no idea she was still keeping at it with AP. It just broke my heart further because I think, deep down, I was hoping she at least had some respect for our marriage. Next morning, she tried to pretend to have a headache. We were supposed to go and see the lawyer for the lease. I told her we needed to go, and she seemed to panic again. She admitted that her whole spiel the previous morning was just a last-ditch effort to stop me from making her leave. She then suggested we go to marriage counseling to clarify some things. I told her no. We were way past that stage at that point. I told her that after everything, going no contact with AP was the bare minimum I'd expected from her if there was ever going to be a chance for us. I explained that it was upsetting that she never showed any real vulnerability or humility. She kept pushing me to define what I wanted from her, whether there was any hope left or not, because she didn't want to waste her energy. I told her she was hopeless and that she was moving out whether she liked it or not, that she could decide whether she was going to the apartment I found her or the homeless shelter. I've made arrangements for her to sign the lease for her own place tomorrow and keeps asking how she's supposed to afford it after the first three months are over, which I've already paid the rent for. Honestly, I don't have answers for her anymore. I'm tired of being manipulated and gaslighted, and I feel numb to the pain. Thanks to everyone who shared advice and support. Final update. She's finally gone. She signed the lease for her new place and moved out. The house feels empty now, and I feel part of my soul is dead. She wanted to come back and collect her stuff, but I told her I'd bring it over next time I visit. She's not getting back into this house, no matter what crap she tries to pull. There's not much in her apartment. I didn't stock any food or even a toilet paper roll. She took a bag of her clothes and a few toiletries with her when she moved out. Other than that, she's got nothing. I didn't give her any money either. She can ask her affair partner for help. She's not my problem anymore. I spoke with my lawyer and he said the divorce papers will be ready tomorrow. 
I'll end up having to pay alimony. I don't want to, and I might consider offering a lump sum up front just so I can be done with her. Thanks again to everyone who's been supportive throughout this nightmare. Now for some comments. It's incredibly telling that she's more focused on how she'll afford her new place than on how to make amends for the damage she's caused. This isn't about love or remorse for her. It's about losing her safety net. I've seen too many people fall for manipulative tactics like this, but I'm glad you're seeing it for what it is. Keep strong and don't let her back in, emotionally or physically. You're on the right path by choosing yourself and your own peace. You're coming off as pretty vengeful. It's one thing to move her out and start fresh, but it's another to make sure she's left with absolutely nothing. You're basically just going out of your way to be nasty. Don't stoop to that level. It's not worth it. This doesn't make you the bigger person. It just makes you look petty and vindictive. If you're really done with her, just let her go with some dignity. Story 2 Infidelity as a positive? So I expect this not to be a popular opinion, but I'm trying to find a bright side, okay? My, 33, wife, 33, of seven years cheated on me for two months with a colleague last year. It's taken almost a year for us to put things back together. During this time, I had what the doctor called an acute stress reaction. Really awful experience as my brain got overloaded with so many stressors that it basically disconnected with my thoughts and emotions. That's what it felt like. It was hell. And not just because of this episode. So much else went down. So much pain. But, to be honest, I'm starting to feel something like gratitude for the whole thing. I was an emotional asshole before all this happened. Really, not that this in any shape or form makes it okay that she cheated and she's so remorseful about what happened. I just feel like I'm a better man now than I was before. I'm in the best shape of my life. I've never read so much self-development stuff as I have now. I'm totally there for my wife when she needs me. Couldn't understand her emotionally at all before. We share the most intimate details of our past and current lives, even so far as me talking about my office crush. We are way better in touch with our feelings and better people for it. She is this really awesome, broken, fragile woman. My wife has even come to understand her sexuality, which she really was never before. Thank you, Emily Nagoski. Come as you are. And thanks to this, we're having the best sex of our lives. Before, it was basically a dead bedroom situation. We're now having our second child, and I could not be happier. I did not know what a connection with another person really meant before all this went down. It's like both of us were asleep and we've woken up. If someone would ask me if I preferred things stayed the same as they were a year ago between us and not have her cheat versus have her cheat and for the things to be the way they are now, I'd have to say that I prefer that she did cheat. Okay, the best thing would have been for us to rediscover each other in some smoother way because I'm still haunted by almost daily images of them together. It's getting better though, fast. As I see it, life is pain and we have to take responsibility for our inadequacies, become the best that we can become through the pain. Does anyone find this all reassuring? Like, yes, cheating is unfair and painful, but we have to find some purpose behind it. Make lemonade if life gives us lemons. Anyway, I hope someone finds some solace in this trail of thoughts and maybe helps you recover, whether you stay together or not. This was a very public exercise in me trying to rewire my thinking on infidelity. I get what you're trying to say, finding some growth through all the pain. It's definitely not the usual perspective, but I respect that you're finding a way to see the positives after everything. It's good that you've both done a lot of self-reflection and have come out stronger. That said, cheating is still a huge betrayal, and it's important to remember that the pain it causes isn't something everyone can or should have to work through. It's great that it led to a better place for you both, but that's not the case for everyone. Just remember, growth doesn't always have to come from something so damaging. Now for some comments. They say when you reconcile, you have to mourn the death of your precious relationship and forge a new one going forward. It sounds as if you've forged a better one than you had previously. Still, you'll never fully trust her again, so I suggest repeated emotional check-ins to make sure y'all are both still feeling the same way. Best of luck. If it's working for you and y'all are happy, then it's okay. The pressure provided by this pain has to have an outlet. 
Long term, either you use it to fuel your own self-growth or you let it slowly eat away at you. It can be truly life-changing. Like you said, it's not that you're grateful for the cheating, but it's hard to imagine being the same person you were before it happened. I know I never want to go back to being that man. I don't know if I could really stand being around the old me. Like you said, it's a process, and the pain is a driving force to make the changes that you now realize you always should have made.